Welcome to Framework Fortune and welcome back Framework Fortune community. I'm your host Ben and we've got our co-host H&H Trader Hal in the building. What's going on tonight buddy? Nothing much man. Just uh, having a nice little Saturday. Uh, chilling out. Ready to look at some stocks. Alright sounds good. So it's time for your weekly episodes of the last trip where we take a look at the top gainers on the day recap any trades we took and look for any trades for the next day although it is the weekend so not really too much we're going to be looking for for next week as the market can change week to week but let's not waste any time and dive right in so we got the spy breaking up above the channel and closing above the channel so it does look like it may push up on Monday, but it didn't make very much of a move out of the top of that channel. So I still think this could be a bull trap. It, it bounced off of that, the top of that trend and was go got a little bit of motion up during the day, but we'll see if it can continue. For the most part, I was watching works all day. I actually got in a pretty good position, but was expecting it to go higher and it didn't. It really kind of messed me up. Um, on Friday I mean I didn't get messed up as in I took a big loss but definitely I could have taken profit very quickly and got was up um, I think 140 bucks but man that downwards movement was ridiculous that's where I saw it slam down and I was watching it to hold around the bottom of that uh, that candle and so it came back up it gave a little green run up right there um, yeah right there and then slam back down. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna wait for it to kind of consolidate around the bottom of that um, that top and tail that wick. And I entered right in there, uh, 400 shares right there, at 315, okay, and it lunched right up. There. It lunched up from there, and uh, yeah, I was up about 140. And I was like, all right, this thing's gonna continue. And literally, the next candle, look what it did. Yeah, it dumped right there. That yep. 350 was some strong resistance uh, yep. b all the way back on the daily chart. Yep. But the daily chart does look really good for a possible move next week if we continue kind of the same momentum. This is a very big mm -hmm. U-shape, and if it breaks 350 uh, like it failed to do on Friday, if it can actually break it, that could be a really yep. nice mover. I don't think it was a bad position that I took right there in that little that little get up and go in that little dip right there. Yeah. Because I mean it was up thirty five cents right there, but I was looking for it to test through the high of that uh that last wick candle through there mm -hmm. right there yeah yeah and it just failed to do it. I would say you probably got in a little too high for my liking, but I mean that was a good support buy where you bought it at. I like to be in down yeah. here. <laughs> You know, you got to take what the market gives you, and it did give you an opportunity to make a quick profit there. That was, I mean, that was a move from about yeah. 315 up to 343. Yes, yeah, about 30, 35 cents, something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was so, 140 bucks. Yeah, so I mean, that was even, even though that was higher, it was still a good trade. But I do think it is one to keep an eye on next week. So, Annie, after you guys all convinced me that this was not a head and shoulders pattern on your live stream. I jumped in there on the downfall of the head and shoulders pattern. <laughs> 150 shares. I got 100 first at 540, and then as it dropped, I made this little <laughs> indecision candle. I'm blaming it on you. You, One Life, Daniel B., all of you, and your whole chat told me I was that I was wrong about this head and shoulders pattern and that I wasn't seeing it. So it's all y'all's fault. I don't care. I'm blaming y'all. But... I, <laughs> I tried to average down some on this little indecision candle and bought 50 more at 512. So I was average at like a 150 shares at 530. And then this thing just continued to dump like a head and shoulders pattern usually does. And uh, <laughs> so I, I tried to hold it all throughout the rest of the day because it, it did keep trying to come back up. And BTBT and Bitcoin and Ethereum were running. Any should have continued running. So the fact that it didn't, it was not making the same movements as BTBT BT was. And I pulled BTBT BT up. Yeah, so as you can see here, BTBT BT had nice, nice rip up, nice momentum. And Annie just couldn't get it. So it makes me think that there's some type of selling pressure in this. Either an institutional holder who's dropping shares, who 
maybe's been in, you know, back here at this dollar forty at the low of year or something. I don't know, but there's a weight that is on top of Annie, and that makes me not want to mess with it. But I held it literally till the last minute of market close after market hours, and uh, it just started dropping there, and I had to get out. So I ended up taking a sixty dollar loss. BTBT, we'll go to it since I mentioned it. You know, you guys have known that I've been on BTBT since this candle here and been bullish on it the whole entire time. So I sold out all of my BTBT because I didn't want to hold over the weekend except for five shares. I kept five shares just because we were seeing bullish movement on Friday or yesterday in the crypto markets. And if that continued, I wanted to still have that five shares. And so far today has been very, very hot in the crypto market. So BTBT could continue to run, but we are getting a little extended on this chart and we need a day of consolidation. That wasn't a day of consolidation. It opened up, dropped like it normally does. U-shaped back, back up and then broke out and ran $4. So that's definitely not a consolidation. But it did hold... 17 or after hours after all the day trades that i took out it and then the swings and adding to it uh, i mean you can see all these just on the on the five day chart how many different positions i've took and added and stuff like that so it's been a very nice one for me it's given me a lot of profits and that's why i was okay with risking a little bit on annie because i did make so much on this so I'm pretty happy with the way it's performed. If it keeps running, it keeps running. Maybe I'll look to get back in it more other than the five shares. But it's going to be a new week and everything could change. The week before last, it was pharmaceutical stocks. This week has been crypto stocks. Next week could be corn stocks. <laughs> but still keep them on watch as long as uh, the crypto market is hot. BITF I bought Thursday when it started moving up, this one was one that Hal pointed out in the last rip. Didn't you point it out? No. no you didn't? Okay. Well, somebody uh -huh. pointed BITF out to me. I don't remember who it is, but whoever you are, I appreciate that. You can correct me down in the comments, let me know. But I got in when it started moving on Thursday at 50 shares at 506 and held it as a swing through Friday and sold at 595. So. On 50 shares, a dollar, basically, well, 90 cents as a $45 win, something like that. That win alone took up most of the loss on Annie, and that allowed yeah. me to uh, stay green on the week with the profits from BTBT. Pretty good week for me. I'm looking at your scanner, and I'm seeing something that looks like 1,300% up, but maybe I'm wrong. Oh, yeah. This is, I traded this. This had a reverse stock split, I'm pretty sure. Cause oh, it, okay, okay. Yeah, because it was way down here in 40 cents and then jumped up to 429. I mean, there's no move, there's no candles, so it had to have been a reverse stock split. And mm -hmm. the first two days, it was just going sideways. And then I saw it could pop up on my scanner, and it was like right in this area. And I was like, okay, this is one to keep an eye on as it's starting to get some attention. And it's kept climbing, climbing, climbing slowly. So I hopped in, saw this indecision, this red little little tail candle here, followed by that bullish engulfing candle. So I jumped in there, 40 shares at 579. And it shot all the way up to 677, but I expected more. It got halted right here at 643. So mm -hmm. because it never been this high, there was no resistance or anything, uh, I was expecting that halt to lead to a gap up and break up over the downtrend there, but it didn't because it had it did have this weird, crazy top and tail there in after mm -hmm. hours up to 750. So you can see where that downtrend is now that has been drawn, but I just couldn't break out. So I accidentally only sold 10 shares of it again because I was in multiple trades. <laughs> I realized later when it had come back up over six. So I just held it through the day, and then at the end of the day, I saw it was cracking below kind of 550 area, 560 right across here, and got out when it cracked that because it was like a big triangle, like a triangle breaking down. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It may be one to keep on watch as it did start getting some buying volume Friday, but it's sketchy. Yeah.
works was the pretty much the most important one the one that i was going in the biggest on. um i did take a little stab at annie on the bottom but it just never could get back green on the day it was just yeah. struggling down there so i just left it and i marked this bottom on the very bottom okay. right there and i was like all right i need to see it rest above that bottom so that's what it did it came down and it rested right there above it on the next bottom over right to there. the right right there yeah. and then it started to pop up and i was like all right let me just see some consolidation i saw that consolidation and i was like uh this one looks kind of iffy because it was still under the vwap at this point and i was like let me see it attack the vwap and it attacked it it attacked it all the way through and then gave a pullback to the vwap and a huge move up and i still didn't take the trade on it so it did this little drop back below or back uh yeah below the vwap that big drop right there that red candle yeah. and then i was like all right let me see some consolidation here and see if it can take off again so i entered right on uh go back just a little bit okay so not this green candle but the next red candle right in there right before that indecision so this candle here yeah and i was waiting for it to break back above the the five dollar level but it just never did yeah it tried to break five and it looks like it hit 510 and just came back down then tried to pop again mm -hmm. gave a little fake out breakout there to get the people's attention it's got to be green on the day if it was moving up i guarantee you annie would have got so much volume but not the right position yeah, and that's why I say it still could be one to keep on watch. If that selling gets out of there, it should move the same way BT and BITF are moving. But that difference in move is is interesting. It means there's something going on. Starting this next week, start Monday, I'm going to be coming in looking for, you know, what's going to be the sector that may be moving or what's the new trend or is crypto stocks going to continue to run. It could change very easily, but I'm waiting that first 30 minutes of the market out on Monday for sure because it's <laughs> it's probably going to be crazy to start off with. Yeah. Also, uh, just a reminder, on Mondays, I will be having kind of like a business meeting uh, from now on. So Mondays, 8 o'clock, I will not be there. I'll probably start trading um Depending on how the meeting ends, it may be 30 minutes, it may be an hour. So about 9 or 9.30, I'll be coming online. You heard that. How's going to be late on Mondays, just like I am normally. No, just kidding. We should be on time for Monday on my side of things, but you guys know how I am. I don't let perfectionism get in the way of progress. <laughs> Appreciate everybody's support. Stay safe out there. Until next time.